Hey guys, in this video today, this is a follow up on our first video on dynamically allocated arrays and I am actually assuming in this video that you've watched that other one. So if you haven't, I do recommend you do that because um, I will assume you, you're familiar with all the functions that we're talking about today. The other thing that I recommend uh, you do is maybe go, go back and take like four minutes to watch uh, this pass by reference. Uh, part one video and start at the six minute and 20 second mark if you've seen the whole video and if you know how to do this but maybe just start at the six minute 20 second watch the end of the video and then watch the first like three minutes of part two and it'll explain in a much more simplified context uh, essentially uh, why we're uh, why and what we're doing today so I think uh, this video will make more sense if you just pause it go watch like four minutes of those videos and then come back so I'll assume you've done that. Uh, here on the right, we see our sample file. This is exactly the same as what we had in our last video. And so much so that I even, I even commented out our print function. I'm not even gonna print it out. Just trust me, it builds and runs and it works. So here's the file that we had um, that we we're using in our last video. And you can see the main difference here is in the double array function and the read in file function. In this one, we were returning void. And now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna return a pointer of type student info for both of these. And the reason that we're having to do that today is because in, in the first video, we used a uh, reference to a pointer whenever we were passing into these functions. We were passing uh, the reference to a pointer, and uh, now what we're doing is we are creating a new pointer in these function each time they are called. And the pointer is gonna be pointed to this, the original location in memory, but it's actually gonna be a new pointer. So uh, I'll explain more of what that means, but um, let's just talk about the changes here. So one of the things I've done is I've put three C out statements, and that is the only thing it's going to print. Here I'm printing out the address and memory of, of this C boulder, okay? And then we can see that I'm setting this C boulder equal to our read in file function, which is going to return a pointer of the correct type. And you can see that I'm passing in C boulder here. And uh, our add student and print function are both exactly the same as they were in the first video. And now uh, moving down here, you can see that I've also printed out the location of this C boulder. And you can see that it's, it's declared right here. And again, um, by the way this is declared, you can see that this is actually a new pointer, but is pointing to the same address in memory as the one in main. And uh, then what we've done here is we set the C boulder equal to double array when we called it. And again, you can see the same thing is going on in, C, in uh, double array. This uh, C boulder pointer is pointing to uh, the original address in memory that we assigned in main, uh, but it's actually a new pointer. And um, these if statements, don't even worry about them that I have. They're, all I did was so that this would only print out once. I didn't want it to print out a whole bunch of times and um, I've printed out the address and memory of this e boulder. Okay, so we've got three, three print statements. I'm gonna go ahead and build and run this, and this is the point that I wanted to make. Each of these C boulders is actually saving to a different location in memory, and so they are different, and what, what that means and why that matters is that when we create this new array, this temp array here inside of our double array function, um, we can't uh, set C boulder equal to that temp array because this C boulder is a different location in memory. That that's this C boulder, this location in memory. And so now, if I if I change the value stored at this location in memory, as soon as this goes out of scope, it's it's gone. It, all the changes I made have been lost because this C boulder, which is the one uh, up here in the read in file function is a different location in memory and it hasn't been changed. And so what we've done to fix that is now we're returning it. So we're returning this temp array so that this C boulder inside of our read in file function is now gonna be pointing to the correct location and to this new array. And so we haven't lost information. So if we didn't do this, every time we called double array, it would do all this stuff. But as soon as it went out of scope, uh, this location in memory would be pointing somewhere else, but it wouldn't matter because this location in memory would not know that. And so the solution for that again is is to make pointers of type student info and to return them. So this is our double array, and you can see again 
that it's returning that temp array. And so we've set this second C boulder, which is this location in memory, uh, equal to it. So uh, that's what we've done here. And then we return again in this, uh, this read in file function is going to return C boulder. And that's the one that we declared right here. Again, the second location in memory. I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but it, this is a little confusing, so I want to make sure it's really clear. And uh, we've we've done it if else, so we return it uh, twice depending on the condition. So if the file failed to open, we still want to return C boulder. But uh, here, hopefully, we're returning the C boulder that we've we've already modified. And so it's kind of inceptiony because we're having to do it multiple times, which makes it a little bit more confusing. Um, but our read in file function here, you can see. Here's where we're setting our original location in memory, this one, uh, equal to, to point to, rather, our read in file function here. Um, so that's what's going on. Uh, and and it's, <laughs> it's really that simple, but uh, you can see that uh, by not doing um, a reference uh, to a pointer, it makes things much more difficult and you're having to do multiple returns. And, and it's also kind of odd because, you know, when you're actually adding students, you can leave that as a void, okay? So you can actually, because you can still access um, the locations in memory this is pointing to and, and all, the, all the things that are saved there, but you can't modify the original C boulder um, inside of like this function. So uh, when you pass, uh, when you actually declare a new pointer that's pointing to the same location. So uh, anyways, I hope between this video and the other video that was clear, uh, if it's not, please leave a comment below and I will give it another try and see if I can't clarify. And we'll see you in the next video.